Alrighty, well, good morning, everybody. And um, this time around, uh, one, I'm doing this uh, pretty early, uh, 3 a.m. So, and um, secondly, the reason behind that is uh, this time around, I'm going to kind of go old school. Um, there's there's not going to be any any videos, no GIFs or, or no images, no GIFs, no no extra fan, extra uh, fancy stuff. All it's going to be is just a, a relaxing walk in thunderstorm, uh, binaural rain and nature sounds for sleep and study. Just, it, again, it's one of the reasons why I'm doing this early because doing, doing it this way is going to kind of jack up the file size. So I'm going to need that extra time to get the video uploaded and all that. So, but again, there's, there's like, um, very little prep work involved in this. So it, this is just gonna again. This is just gonna be me talking, like no, no images or any extras or anything like that. So, so let me go ahead and uh, rewind this back. Um. Okay. Uh. But otherwise, like yesterday, um, uh, I just did some uh, just kept watching uh, watching my season one of Planet Earth. And um, and I did misread the um, I misread the uh, description. I thought I I thought I bought what the hell? Uh oh, okay. I scared the crap out of me for a moment. I thought um, thought maybe my computer was restarting or something, which it has a which has a nasty habit of doing. So. But yeah, anyway, um, I originally thought that I I purchased the season I purchased it like ten years ago, like the season one. Um, I actually took a closer look, and no, I I guess I purchased it like a couple years ago. Because I mean, it it showed the um just underneath the title, the title of the vi on all the videos, the like two thousand thirteen. I think what that referred to is what it was actually uploaded to YouTube. Because I, I scrolled down and it said, uh, purchased something 2019. I'm like, oops. So yeah, I guess I bought it like a couple years ago. But still, I mean, still, that's a pretty, I mean, that's a pretty long time to sit on something. You know, so, but like I, like I said, just fired it back up yesterday, started watching it. I think, um, I think I'm on like the uh, eighth or ninth episode now. The one where they're talking about great, uh, great planes. So, so yeah, you get to it's pretty much a video series about the way things used to be before uh, before climate change and all that uh, turned everything into what it is now. So. Um, but, and then, um, after, and then, um, I also watched, uh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, uh, I'm gonna take a drink here of, uh, <clears throat> Arizona green tea. Oh, and also, I forgot to mention this, but, uh, I can't remember the last time it's happened, but it has happened. Um, if you guys are, if you guys watch these videos, and if you like what you're seeing, I highly suggest that you download them. So I think, I think this actually happened with one of these videos. Um, I uploaded it to YouTube, and everything seemed, you know, fine and rosy. And then, probably like a week, probably like some odd days later, um... I got a takedown notice, like an actual email. Like uh, the the people whose uh, video I used didn't like it and wanted me to wanted me to take it down. So so uh, so again, if you guys like what you're seeing, I I highly recommend that you download it, because who knows how long these things are gonna stay up. And I think uh, this the kind of video that you're seeing right now is one of those. 
Um, and then, uh, and then I also watched, uh, I watched, uh, an episode of Analyzing Evil. It's just, uh, his name's, the channel, the channel's named The Vile Eye. And he just, you know, he basically analyzes the evil char evil characters and stuff, and this time around it was, uh, it was, uh, Davy Jones from, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. And it, it, I, I could, I could watch maybe like a few minutes of it. It just, just way too heavy on the CGI. So, I ended up crying uncle and, uh, I think, um, I think I actually watched like, I think I watched part of one video about CGI and like the, kind of the history of it and stuff like that. The camera tricks they use and Wizard of Oz and whatnot. So yeah, I'm I'm one of those that I I can't stand I can't stand CGI, I can't stand the computer graphic stuff, especially when it's done um when they're really super heavy handed about it like like Star Wars Star Wars prequel kind of heavy handed where like I think ninety percent of it was CGI and very little of it was actors, and I'm I'm not I'm not you know I'm not trying to be some hipster or anything like that, you know. I, Oh, only the old movies matter. Or anything like that. No, it just, I just don't like it. You know, now, sometimes it can be good. You know, like if, uh, if you don't, you know, if the, if the door trim, if the door trim in a room just, you know, looks really bad, you know, you know, enhance the color of it or something, you know, give that door a more lively appearance, you know, you know, subtle uses of it don't bother me. Things I probably wouldn't have noticed otherwise. You know, just, like like I said, little color touches, that kind of stuff. You know, CGI in, like, an alarm clock on top of an end table, that kind of thing. But when they're, when they're making, when they're making, like, almost the entire movie out of CGI, I can't stand that. It's, and, um, I want to say that the Star Wars prequels, like in the 90s, were one of the worst. I think it, I think it was probably the one that started at all, as far as that goes. And and secondly, you know, it's like the, you know, you you I wouldn't even I wouldn't even bother having big name actors in there, like Pirates of the Caribbean and had Johnny Depp. I I probably wouldn't even recognize the guy. They probably have so much CGI. They probably had so much CGI shit on the guy, he's barely recognizable. I'll bet a lot of the other actors are like that. They probably, and yeah, they use uh, they use big name actors on them, but you probably wouldn't even recognize them. You know, because of all that computer graphic shit they put all over them. You know, you know it's like, you know, it. Oh God! What else was I wanting to say about that? It's like you know, you might. I mean, it's like the uh, actors take a backseat role. I mean, it's like the CGI people are the real stars of the show. You know how unlike uh, a lot of the movies where they they show the credits at the start of the movie, you know, starring Billy Bob Jones, you know, and Joe Blow and Jenny Joe Jones, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, start start starring the uh, CGI people that did all the computer graphics. You know, have them there in the uh, list of credits at the start of a movie. You know, it's like, the actors are pretty much just along for the ride. And another thing I was thinking about, too, is, uh, it's, it's, this has got to be, uh, this has got to be awkward for the actors, too. You know, it, you know, they're probably used to, uh, you know, interacting with people. Interacting with people and not, and not inanimate objects. You know, they're probably used to you know, and I'm pretty sure uh, some of these actors, they probably went through training for it. They, you know, they probably trained in an actor school. Imagine how, you know, imagine how goofy that would be if uh, part of your training was learning how to, learning how to interact with CGI objects, you know. Learning how to act while wearing, wearing one of them, one of them headsets that does face recognition, that kind of thing, you know. Trying to act, you know, learning how to act while wearing a mocap suit, a, a motion capture suit. So, you know, that, I mean, that, that's gotta be weird, that's gotta be really weird to go through something like that, you know.
you know, I mean, it, at least with me, again, not being a hipster or something or anything like that, but it, it definitely wouldn't have been something I signed up for. You know, if I wanted to become an actor, I want to act with, you know, I want to act with people, you know, and not have to... Atlanta Branch National League. Where the hell is this? Oh, it doesn't say. We want that back a little bit. Atlanta? Atlanta, Georgia, I guess. You know, again, I want to, you know, I want to act with people, you know, in a room. I guess cla the classic, for lack of a better word, method. You know, the old school method of uh, acting. And what is this? It's kind of like a, like a wilderness walk of fame or something. Those, these all have names on them. It's pretty interesting, but, you know, anyway, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to learn how to act in a mocap suit, you know, or have to, have to learn how to, how to wear, how to wear really weird props so the computer animation people can, you know, make better images out of me, you know, that kind of thing. So, like I said, that, that's got to be a, I mean, that's got to at least, that's got to at least be awkward if, if not unbearable. So, and then there, and then there's the fact that uh, a lot of times the CGI looks blatantly obvious. You know, kind of like a girl who gets the uh, gets a triple left boob job or something. It, it's pretty obvious she went under the knife. You know, I guess this thing could probably be said for a lot of plastic surgery too. You know, damn, she looks like a weird looking fuck doll. It's pretty obvious she's been under the knife. Kind of the same thing with a lot of these movies. You know, it kind of kills the immersion, I guess. So, you know, and... You know, and, and again, I'm not... You know, I'm not just being some grumpy old-fashioned person. It's just, I just don't like the stuff. Now, if one were to ask, you know, well, what about those old classic cartoons, Joe? They were doing that kind of thing back then, too. Oh, well, yeah, I mean... Um, there was like a... There was like a Looney Tunes episode where they uh, mixed in with, they mixed in cartoons with uh, live action stuff. Um, I think it was uh, Porky Pig, Dappy Duck, but even then, all you the only animation you saw in those cartoons was just the cartoon characters. That's it. Um, oh, what was another one? And roto and rotoscoping, and that's. That's kind of gray area. Um, personally, I think that's probably the uh, the the pinnacle, right right there. Where um, where animate where uh, all the uh, frames of animation is literally is drawn over live action footage. I mean, something like that doesn't bother me as much. You know, where it's uh, live action and animation. You know, it's just kind of that, kind of that middle ground. But not, not these days, you know, like the Marvel Avengers movies and all that. and Which are, again, which, which kind of harken back to the uh, Star Wars sequels in the 90s where 90% of it is CGI. That, I'm not a fan of. So... Okay, but it, enough, enough of that. Enough of that. Um, just uh, moving up, moving right along. Um, I also this was also my uh, this is also my fighting game night too. Just uh, played a few, just played a few fighting games. Um, I actually recorded one, but I didn't re couldn't really get up the gumption to edit it down to like short one minute segments or anything like that, or into short one minute video bits. Just just didn't have to get up and go to do something like that, but just played some Fantasy Strike. Um, I did an arcade run on my main character Rook, he, the the big grappler. Um, and I've said this in my stream yesterday too. I would have played a character named Argagargle. I really, I think it's Argagarg or something like that. He's what's called a he's what's called a zoner, a zoner character. 
He's basically a ranged attacker. Most of his abilities are centered around range. Excuse me, around ranged attacks. But uh, again, he's got a he's got an awkward control scheme, and you can't you can't remap the keybinds or anything like that, so you're stuck with it. So I I tried playing him for a while, but I ended up crying uncle. I just I don't play him anymore. So, but anyway, I did a I did a hard mode arcade run on him. Um, I also uh, I also fired up a game called Dive Kick, where mechanically it's one of my favorite fighting games of all time. Uh, mechanically, it's a, it's a game that's literally played with only two buttons. I mean, it's freaking brilliant. I mean, you, you can and you can do so much with just those two buttons. It kind of reminds me, it, it's I think it's 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 not a you can't you can't do PvP with it. You can't do any head-to-head -head two player play or anything like that, but it's called one finger death punch. It's like that too. It's a game that's played with only two buttons. But all the things you can do with those two buttons is just awesome. So I love games like that. But um like Fantasy Strike, the one thing that really kills it for me for with dive kick is just the uh, aesthetics. Um some of it you know, some of it, um, you know, there's lots of, round one, dive kick, you know, or they had a girl in there, a Kung Pao, like, yeah, just like that, like, you know, it's like they're mocking Asians or something, so that, I find that a little bit uh, off-putting, um, and it's, it's supposed to give a nod to a lot, to a lot of, uh, fighting game references, but as one who, uh, who's only been into fighting games, like, maybe, I want to say a couple years now, but before then, 30 years. So there's this big 30-year gap where I wasn't playing any fighting games at all. You know, I didn't even look, I didn't even look their way or anything. It, the, a lot of the references, I don't get it. You know, it all just goes over my head. But um, I also forgot to mention, um, what got me into play, trying out Dive Kick again is uh, another YouTube channel I watch called Wooly Versus. Um, he has a, he has a, oh, what's it called? He has an episode series called Get Into Fighting Games for Fun. And he'll, him and uh, one of his friends, they'll uh, do a podcast of them playing a selected fighting game. And this time around, it was Dive Kick. Uh, watched part of it and like, hmm, maybe I should give this game another go. So, so I did. Um, I did an arcade mode. I got to about the like the fourth or fifth battle and after which the the difficulty pretty much shot up to where I couldn't do a damn thing against the against the uh, computer opponent so but and, and then and then again it was the aesthetics and all that stuff it just eventually made me cry uncle same with fantasy strike it just for those that have never seen my other cast it the aesthetic the especially the lore and storyline it it's like the um, it's like they seem to think it seems to cater to people that like that that are new to the internet, or or they're new to watching TV or something. Like a lot of it just insults my intelligence, I guess for lack of a better phrase. So dive kick, kind of like that, but kind of a flip side. Like I said, they they do a lot of fighting game references that go over my head that I have no clue about. And uh, yeah, I could, I'm sure I could probably uh, I could probably look up those references on Google, but uh, if I have to do if I have to do something like that, then doing something like that isn't gonna help me much. It's like I had to have been there. You know, if somebody tried to explain to me what the references mean, I'd probably just oh, okay. So it probably just go in one ear and out the other. Again, not not that I not that I don't care. It, it, it's just one of those things like you probably just had to be there. I guess the um I guess uh as a kind of a side note, the moment thirty seven, the Daigo Perry, considered the greatest moment ever in fighting game history, that's something else that kinda of goes over my head. I mean you could sit here and they, they I guess they've actually uh they've actually published a book or they actually made a book about it. Just that one particular moment. You know, I could probably read that book until I turn blue in the face, but even then it just 
I don't get it. You know, not downplaying it. I'm not saying it's irrelevant, but like I said, it just and and now and now it's to where it's become an it's become an eyesore because this moment moment 37 is so so prevalent all over the damn place. I'm sick of seeing it. So definitely wasn't my. I mean, definitely wasn't one of my favorite moments. I mean, I get it, but again, it just, it just goes in one eye and out the other. So. But, yeah, I want to, I want to get a location on this too. I want to, here, let me, let me scroll down a little bit. Uh, Stone Mountain Park. Yeah, it's Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, Stone Mountain Park, Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. So. Uh, but otherwise, uh, just I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, call it good. I pretty much said all the things I wanted to say this morning. So, um, yeah, I'll I'll end it here. Uh, but. And yeah, I gotta get this video uploaded and all that. And like I said, this is gonna be a this is gonna be a pretty a pretty large file size. So I'm gonna have, the sooner I get going on uploading this, the better. Uh, but otherwise, hey, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And this will be my last cast for the week. Or I wouldn't even call it I wouldn't even call it much of a week. Um, I gotta work tonight and tomorrow, and then I got my normal days off again. We had a we had last night off. Because uh, of Thanksgiving. So, and then, normally I do work on Thursday nights anyway, but anybody else who is off on Thursday nights has to work. So, so yeah, but, so you probably won't be hearing me, from me again until Sunday morning. But, until then, thanks again for coming by, everybody, and see you all next time. Bye for now.